last piece that I'll record for you for this semester, um, although sometime in, in June, I'll probably take everything off of everybody's playlists and make unlisted playlists of these pieces because these are copyrighted pieces. Um, and then it's possible to have more stuff to look at. But um, The Gavotte by James Hook. And this is rounded binary form, in case you don't remember that. Um, the first line and the last line are the same, but there's a B section. There's an A section and a B section. So the A section is the same four bars twice, and the last half of the B section is that same thing. So if you look at the first line with the right hand, ready, go. Now the second line is almost the same as that. Ready, go. It just ends on C instead of D. And that line is the same as the last line at measure 13. Ready, go. So the tricky thing would be to play the D on the end of the first line instead of playing a C, because that's the only place you have to have a D. Now, measure nine goes, ready, play. And then you have the last line. The same thing is a little bit true of the left hand. Here's the first line of the left hand, ready, play. The second line has a different ending. And ends on tonic, as does the very last line at measure 13. Ready, play. So once you learn one line, you know almost all of them. But let's look at that measure 9 through 12. That's tricky. You start on E, down a second, down a second, up a fifth, down a third, down a third, up a fifth, down a second, down a second, down a second, down a second, up a fifth, down a third, down a third, up a fifth. So I would practice that about 10 times. Pause the tape and practice that 10 times. Now, I'm going to show you how you can start putting that together. And I'm only going to play quarter notes. So in the places where there's eighth notes in the right hand, I'm only going to play the first notes because I just want to line up the hands that go together. So measure nine starts like this. Now here it's tricky because your left hand goes up while your right hand continues to go down. Okay, so once more from the top of measure nine, ready, play. Oh, I did, I just did what I said I wasn't gonna do. I'll try this one more time. Ready, go. you do that 10 or 20 times and run screaming out of the building and come back in and calm down, you can try it this way. Ready, play. That is the line that's going to give you trouble and you're just going to have to sweat it out about the 20th time you practice it, it'll start to come together. It might not really come together comfortably until you practice it 50 times. So it's all a question of how many repetitions you can manage in a day. If you can do five repetitions in a day, you probably master this in 10 days. If you can only do two or three, it's gonna take you two or three weeks. So let's, so then, 
if you're going to practice and so after you i would learn that line first and then worry about the rest of it so pretend that we learn that line now and we're going to go in backwards in sections so measure 13 to the end then measure nine to the end Measure five to the end. And measure one to the end. This would be after you've practiced it a lot. challenging that measure 9 through 12 has got hand independence written all over it so take your time with that and if you get bored with your life feel free to look on there's uh, some scale pages here chord pages inversions um, I would start if you do the arpeggios do them non legato first and that will help you get the right technique for um, the kinetic etude is a nice challenge, diversion, jocoso. You can start learning the notes to any of those things and we'll finish this book in the fall. And then if you're taking lessons in the fall and if you're not, you can just return it to me. Have a good summer, Christina.